In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to create this beautiful pleated buttercream cake. We're going to be finishing it off with some fresh flowers, and to help us out with that, we've brought in Darlene Vanderkamp, who's one of Australia's best floral stylists, and who has worked on thousands and thousands of weddings, a lot of them with us. I'm going to run you through today how to um, create the effect and to safely put your fresh flowers into your wedding cake without actually placing them into the cake itself. Um, I'm going to teach you how to wire um, and a few little tips on different styles of wiring. Now that we've baked our two six inch cakes and our two eight inch cakes, both round, uh, we're aiming for the height to be two inches plus the top crust when you're baking. The first thing you wanna do is cut, fill and crumb coat both of your cakes. I'm using my chosen taupe and pink for the crumb coats. And if you wanna see this in any more detail, go ahead and check out our cut, fill and crumb coat playlist. Next, we're gonna go ahead and stack our cakes. If you need a hand with this, check out the garden wedding cake class and that will show you exactly how we do it. Now we're almost on to the fun piping stuff, but there is one more thing that we want to do to help us in the piping process. Um, what we've got in our PDF is just a, a marker at two inches. Basically, we're gonna use this as a guide so that when we do our diagonal pleats, we're not guessing and estimating um, how far and how long they're meant to be and at what angle. We want to mark all of that out properly so that we're confident when we pipe. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually Press this against the side of the cake. I'm going to place a mark on the bottom right, because on the bottom tier we're working from right up to left. And then I'm gonna place one up here. Okay, so we've got our two marks here. Then we're just going to draw a bit of a line traveling between them. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it keeps us on the right angle. Again, coming around, place a little dot and a little dot. Let's see, we're coming up to here. Work our way around, remembering bottom left, top right this time. There, all right, so now we have a rough idea of the directions. Um, what we're going to be using for our piping is a 104 tip. Um, I'm mildly obsessed with that tip. We use it for our begonias, we use it for our roses, um, the petal cake, the ruffle cake, and now our pleated cake. So um, it's excellent value. If you get one of those and you watch our classes, you'll be using it all the time. We've got a disposable piping bag. We've got a coupler. You don't necessarily have to have one, um, but I just like the fact that it locks it in a bit more securely so I can apply a little bit more pressure. And if something happens and this clogs, then I can just wash out the tip and not the whole bag. So now I'm going to take our bottom color, which is our sort of natural bony beige shade that we've made up. If I was to have my hand up nice and straight, elbow down, I would have um, what's nicknamed big bottom girl down. You want to have a teardrop shape. So you want the biggest part at the bottom and the smallest part at the top. What we're going to be doing with this cake, we're going to start on our bottom tier. We've already marked out our lines for ourselves as a bit of a guide. We're going to follow one of those. When we get to the top, we actually want to end it by heading in the opposite direction. That will give a, a bit more of a concertina effect at the top. Um, so what we're going to do is start at the very base, rest your piping tip almost onto your board. In a second, we'll pop it straight onto your board. Try and pull it back from your line so that you'll be able to actually see the line as you're working. There, and then just press it against the cake. Coming up, and then release. We're gonna be working in this direction now 
If you're ambidextrous, this is absolutely the cake for you because when you're doing these concertinas, you will discover that one direction is easier for you than the opposite direction. Um, so if you can do both, brilliant. Most of us can't. So for me, I'm left-handed. I will find that my bottom tier will be a whole lot easier to do than my top. Um, if you would like your bottom tier to be a lot easier and you're right-handed, just switch the direction around but you'll always find that one of them will be a little bit more um, comfortable as you go and that's normal and natural so don't feel like you're doing something wrong that's just how unfortunately piping is so coming over by a third to get it started then slowly lift it up and you're working to try and get it to stick to the previous one and also to the cake itself so you're looking when you look down here you want to see that it's actually attached to the cake all the way. So now say that you're piping and you accidentally don't end up quite being lined up. You've got this big gap. The best thing you can do is stop before you get to the top. You don't want to be going over the top multiple times, but you can cover and hide your error. So if we've done that, what you want to do is start exactly where you were, squeeze a little bit extra to cover, and then you're going to come straight over the top. And then work your way up and it's like it never happened. No one's ever going to see that. It's not going to affect your, your um, future ones at all. There we go. And now we're just going to go one straight over the top. So the first thing that we're going to do when we work on our top tier is we found where our front is, which is right here. We want our flowers to be right about there. So in that top right hand corner, um, that's where all of our pleats are going to be heading towards. So in this case, we're going to be piping everything in the opposite direction. Um, if you're right handed and you've been following me, this will get a whole lot easier on this tier, I promise. Um, and then basically we want them to come over and we're not worried about this concertina effect of going one way and then the other. All we're worried about is heading to that central point. We're going to start here and we're going to follow our line all the way up to the top, get some extra icing and then follow it all the way over to our line. One thing about doing these is probably every five or six or so, what we'll need to do is just sort of blunt it in towards itself and not go all the way. Otherwise it will get too built up on the top. So we're going to do a few more and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so as we come up, we're just going to release it a little bit early just so that we're not overlapping all the time. You will find that as you get closer to where our flowers are going, this top section gets easier and easier. All the way up to the top. So now we have all of our pleats finished. We're going to keep our piping bag Now's a good time to squeeze it all out, unscrew the coupler, and we're going to place a number seven piping tip on there. Okay, so what we're going to be working on now is just creating a nice border. Um, it's just a very simple pearl border for our cake. We're going to start by doing our squeeze and release. keeping our pressure really light. You're not actually squeezing very hard, you're just applying a bit of pressure more than anything. Okay, and your final one is just a dot and that's it. So now that we've finished piping on our cake, it's time to bring this design to the next level and add in some fresh flowers to accent it. So I'm no flower expert, so I've brought Darlene in who is, and she's gonna walk you through step by step how to pull this together the right way. The first thing I'm going to do, we've cut all of our flowers off to a, to a short length. Um, we're going to wire the flowers so that you can actually place them onto the cake. Um, 
we also have a cake vial that we're actually going to place them into. Yes. Um, which Vanessa has there. Yes, so this is where all of the flowers are going to go into the cake. So that step's really easy. My part of this is super fast. This is it. So pop that in, go all the way down so that you can't see it. So what we're, where we're going from now is we have a 24 gauge wire or you could use a 22 gauge wire. Um, you can cut them into a half until you feel confident. You can cut them halfway um, so that you have a fairly length of wire in case you make a bit of a mistake you can sort of make, fix it up or as you get a little bit further into it you can cut them into thirds because we don't want them too long um, so I'm going to take a half wire first and show you what we do with that so we pull the top of the petal parts back and we'll feed the wire through this top part here and you have to push firm in roses because there's a lot of petals inside of them so you get it to this section and then with a finger either side, you pull it down either side, and then with your other hand, you squeeze that in tight so it's firm against the stem. That's the easy part. The next part is we have parafilm, which is available pretty well anywhere these days. So, yeah, cake supply shops have it a lot of the time because it is something that we use on sugar flowers as well. Exactly. Um, floral tape, uh, which isn't quite as stretchy, and then parafilm. So, you prefer pa parafilm for the fresh? Parafilm is much stretchier for the fresh flowers. Okay, great. So how we start with the with parafilm in your flower is you bring a piece at the very very top. Sorry, it's very hard to show this section. Um, once you get it, you sort of band it around the top like sticky tape, um, and then it's very stretchy. So if you pull with a little bit of pressure, you will see that the tape just pulls out for like stretches right out. So once you've got it on there, you hold the flower at the base, and then you start to twist and pull your tape as you go so it twists and pulls over the wire and continue to do that all the way to the bottom of the wire and once it gets down you should have a nice fine clean line so the next tip I'm going to give you is we're going to use another rose and we're going to wire that as well but I'm going to show you it's just a slightly different way to wire because if you have buds that you don't want to open we'll get you to put it through the top part of the petal and push it straight through, push it straight through your petals. Again, you need to press firm because there's lots of petals in there. And if you feed it through this way, your petals won't continue to open. They'll stay exactly where you want them. So you don't have roses that open right up throughout the course of the day. So we continue threading this all the way down, um, parafilming so it's stretched nice and tight. So now we've got this done um, and we're gonna start putting them in. So ideally we would pick our first flower, um, we would put it into the holder and we would pull it forward and we would see that that's too far. So we would take it out, snip a little bit off the end of it and we always would put our furthest out flower first so that we get the best design that we're after. So that's your first flower in. So then we're, gonna, we're going to continue to place our flowers and I'm going to choose colours that suits. So our next two colours are very similar to the first one that we've put on and I actually want to bring that one back to here so that you can see that's too long so I'm going to cut that wire down a little bit as well and we're going to place that in the back section. So this is facing towards the back of the cake at the moment um, and because it's um, very pliable we can bend them to where we want them to sit. Yeah, I think um, we would have been worried to be really gentle with them, but it's not quite like sugar flowers. They're a little bit more resilient. And again, this one, we're going to place that into this side. So we have our third flower that we've placed into the cake. Um, we will then take our fourth flower. We will bring it to the side, back to the other side so that we have a really nice balance happening. Um, we have our fifth flower which we will bring into the hole again, which will fill to this side. We have one little tiny spot left, um, so we are going to use a six flower. That's a gorgeous one though, it's got it's really got the beautiful, vibrant colour. Beautiful colour, hasn't really, it? Really, really perfect for the middle, I think. So we're bringing that in so that it actually just sits nicely. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned a lot about flowers and about the differences between fresh and sugar um, and feel confident so that you can pull off this entire thing. Mm -hmm.